Office 365 is the same Office software you already know and more. Because Office 365 is powered by the cloud, you can get to your applications and files from virtually anywhere and receive automatic updates, meaning it's always up to date. But if you do choose to implement this type of software, what are the ramifications to your IT infrastructure? That's what we're going to be talking about today on Connection Point. Hey there, everyone. I'm James Hilliard. Pleased to have Lane Shelton back with us, VP of Software Business Development with PC Connection. Lane here to talk about how Office 365 brings you cloud-powered connection, collaboration, and control. We'll also discuss how to cut through some of the hype about barriers and strategies and risks so that you can make a sound decision about adopting Office 365. Lane, as always, thanks for taking time to join us today. Glad to be here. Thank you. When it came to this topic, we knew you were our go-to guy. Kind of, I'll put the Microsoft guru title on you, and I can do so because this has been your life, focusing on Microsoft for good almost 20 years. It has, and recently my life has been about all about Office 365. That seems to be a component of the uh, of the strategy discussion that we're having with just about every customer, and it doesn't seem to matter which industry. We're talking to healthcare, we're talking to retail, we're talking to manufacturing, uh, and it doesn't seem to matter what size either. We're, we're talking Office 365 with you know 250 seat shops all the way up to 50,000 and higher seat shops. So it's it's a ubiquitous conversation topic uh, that we've been having on a daily basis with our customers. So broad interest. Let's take a, a little bit of an overview. I think a lot of people understand what Office 365 65 is, but let's give the, the, the basic overview, and then maybe you can also explain why is there such interest and appeal across SMBs all the way to the largest of enterprises? Probably the biggest misconception is people think of Office 365 as Office in the cloud, but Office 365 is a complete package. Depending on which levels you go with, depending on which type of program you're interested in, your Office component, your core applications, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, those are a still installed on-premise on your computer. You're still computing those locally, but your exchange for email, your link for collaboration, and your SharePoint for collaboration, those components, you have a choice. You can deploy them in the cloud or you can deploy them on-premise. So the first misconception about Office 365 is that it's all cloud. Office 365 is actually on-premise and cloud and you get the flexibility to decide which pieces you want to deploy, where, and when. And that's got to be one of the appealing aspects these days because every IT shop I talk to, I don't care what technology it is, they're looking for flexibility. They're they're understanding that there's not a one silver bullet way to do things. Their shop is unique. They need the flexibility to work how they want to work. That's absolutely true, and and really, there's there's two primary reasons, at least in the conversations that we have. Uh, one is first and foremost that flexibility. The you know the the thought as they execute a new licensing agreement, these licensing agreements have a have a multi year course. Some are two years, some are three years, but either way, having the ability over the next few years to remain on premise, go to the cloud any point in between is the primary appeal of the Office 365 licensing solution. Uh, the second you know, reason we hear most commonly is, is companies are tired of, they want to get out of the infrastructure business. They don't want to be chained to the cycle of refresh and, and updates. They want to focus on big data. They want to focus on projects that are mission critical to their business rather than upgrading exchange servers. So it's that freedom to focus on more strategic, more business empowering things than traditional infrastructure upgrades is probably the second primary reason why customers see the appeal of Office 365. Let's talk, Lane, about kind of getting ready for Office 365. Let's take the scenario that someone's done kind of some of their due diligence, and they're thinking, this is probably for us. What are the final kind of top two considerations that you think a team really needs to think about or address, right, to prepare for before they can say, yes, let's sign on the dotted line, bring Office 365 online? So first and foremost is a good, comprehensive licensing strategy to go with the technology strategy. Office 365, because it's flexible, it's also a very different way of licensing. It's subscription-based. It's user-based. It's different than what customers have had in the past. So you need to be able to definitively answer the question, you know, this is the right solution for me at the right cost. So you really need to have a cost-benefit analysis to make sure that 
going with Office 365 as your model, whether you move to the cloud or you stay on premise is the right choice. Most customers are finding that Office 365 is a good way to what we call option the script for the cloud or look at a way to you know, have the ability, even if they don't have firm rock steady plans to do anything yet, they can usually get an agreement together around Office 365 that gives them the ability to do that, but also at a price point that's very close to where they are today or, or in line with their, with their budgets and their expectations. So having a really good strategy, licensing strategy, um, because it is such a different model, it addresses things differently around virtualization, around multiple devices per user. There's a lot of things you have to think through. So having a good strategy is first and foremost. Secondly is readiness, and I can't emphasize this enough. It's not like the old days where you buy some licenses and then you install some software. It's a different way of consuming software. Your end users, they need online accounts. Some, if you're big enough, those accounts need to be federated with your Active Directory for single sign-on. The, the software it can be deployed differently. You're not doing a, a, a push of MSI packages across all your desktops um, via an asset inventory tool. You may be doing Microsoft's new click-to-run technology, which is more of a pull you know, methodology of getting the software to the desktop. All of these things are different than what customers are used to and have done in the past. And so knowing ahead of time where your challenges are going to lie, making sure your Active Directory is clean, making sure that you understand how it's going to impact your help desk, making sure that you understand how it's going to impact the way you support your end user environment. Knowing that ahead of time is the best way to ensure that if you do move elements or all of your business, you know, all of your Microsoft stack to the cloud, that you're, you do so smoothly and successfully. You won't start the process and then run into a roadblock, clear that roadblock, run into the next roadblock, clear that roadblock, run into the next roadblock, clear that roadblock. We've seen that happen a lot. So readiness ahead of time uh, is just as important as having the right licensing strategy. You know, you brought up the idea of roadblocks, and you all have done implementations and deployments. You've seen where people may have run into a risk or a barrier. So can we dive into any, again, top one or two risks that folks need to be aware of that, that you've seen? And again, we pass it on as knowledge, so maybe another group avoids that. I'll say the top two, and I'll talk at a real high level here. Let's lump everything having to do with the logistics of Office 365, provisioning accounts, federating with Active Directory, making sure that you're ready for Office 365. Call those plumbing considerations. Those plumbing considerations uh, are the foundation for a successful deployment. So you really want to make sure that you're addressing all of those plumbing issues before you start actually uh, deploying. Second is wherever you have legacy data or highly customized something to do with SharePoint, something to do with Exchange, wherever you've customized things or you have legacy data that needs to migrate to the cloud, that's where customers run into challenges is making that successful transition from on-premise to the cloud. So those two things, I think, are really key. Know, you know, know where you're going to run into a roadblock around migration and make sure that you have your plumbing in order before you start. And ultimately, I'm taking that to here. You know, timing is everything. Thing. Take time up front, do your due diligence, get the right information, the right assessments, understand where you are, where you want to go, get it all in line first, right? Do that ounce of prevention first to give you the two pounds of cure, right? That, that's kind of what I'm hearing from you. That's exactly right. Once you move into a subscription-based licensing model, which Office 365 most decidedly is, it becomes more challenging down the road to pull out of that licensing model than it used to be in the old perpetual licensing model. So you only get one chance to get in. And so you want to make sure you make the most of that chance. Make sure that you stick the landing on price. Make sure that you understand not just what you're paying now, because remember, it's a subscription service. So even if you get a really great deal up front, you need to be aware of what that's going to do to your costs later on. Because you can't just say, oh, it's time for me to renew. Uh, oh, I don't like that price. I'm just going to turn off the service. You don't have that choice so much with subscription-based licensing. So you need to make sure you're thinking about the long term. 
What am I going to pay today? What am I going to pay tomorrow? What am I going to pay afterwards? So you want to stick the landing on price, you want to stick the landing on terms, and you want to stick the landing on a deployment plan because you only get really one, one true shot to do this right. So make the most of it and make sure that when you do pull the trigger, you're happy on all those points that we covered. We talked, Lane, in the beginning here that there are choices with Office 365, what's going to be on-prem, what's going to be in the cloud. Do you have any insights at this stage as to kind of what best-of-class organizations are doing when making that choice about deployment? Have you seen any trends? And you can say a lot of companies do X percentage here and X percentage there. What have you seen? We're in these dialogues, we're in these trenches with our customers trying to figure out exactly what those best processes are. We're all on the journey, and so we're, you know, we're taking those steps together, and, and we'll be sure uh, as soon as we see best practices emerge and as soon as we see standards establishing themselves, we'll definitely be, uh, be talking further. Let me do this, Lane. I said we would talk a little bit more about kind of what PC Connection does to help folks along this journey, to be that guide moving forward. What what do you feel is the biggest um, benefits that you and your teams are bringing to an organization as they prepare for and move into an Office 365 deployment? Really three areas. Up front, helping you make that financial decision. Our Microsoft license optimization process, which we're known for, really helps to stick the landing on the pricing and the terms to make sure that if this is first and foremost to determine if this is the right choice for you, because it's not going to be the right choice for everybody. We have the tools and the expertise to first help you make that evaluation and say, yep, this is the right thing for me, or nope, I'm going to wait another year, or nope, this isn't going to be good for me. Our MLO process will help you make that decision in a way uh, that you'll be very happy with. When it comes to the plumbing, our readiness assessments, our ability to evaluate your Active Directory, our ability to kind of take you through where all those known roadblocks are so that you can be aware and know where you may run into challenges. That's another major component of our, of our service that we provide to our customers is helping them establish a readiness plan. And then once we're actually in motion, once the readiness plan is underway, once deployments start to happen, once migration starts to happen, our our large staff of services specialists can help with everything from, from email to SharePoint to link to Active Directory, our, whatever, the, the, whatever the issue is that you're dealing with in terms of deployment, we can help you plan, we can help you execute, and we can help you manage. Hey, Lane, that's where we're going to wrap things up. Do appreciate it. I'm going to give the contact information, I promise, in just a moment. Before that, though, the thank you, sir, for being here today. Pleasure. Thank you for, uh, thank you for having me. And folks, if you do want to learn more about the products and services that really can help you select and deploy any of Microsoft's products, including Office 365, then turn to PC Connection. We'll help you optimize your infrastructure with the right software solutions for your organization with a full range of services and support. You can always learn more online at pcconnection.com slash Microsoft services. If you want to give us a phone call, 1-800-800-0014 is the number. The email address, that's pretty simple connect at pcconnection.com. With that, we're going to wrap things up. Once again, my name is James Hilliard. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Connection Point.